Alrighty, so I thought a lot of you guys have asked me a question about retinas cases and uh, inner holes, outer holes, and how you need both of them to cause detachment. I tried to explain that in the class, but I thought it would be a great idea to just go over and discuss that one more time with you guys. So this is your typical retinas, retinas cases. You can see there's a separation of the layers uh, of the retina, um, and uh, there's this like sponge kind of a formation of the retinal layers. Compared to that, when you look at retinal detachment, this is a retinal detachment in which you can see there's a complete separation of neurosensory retinal detachment, neurosensory detachment with RPE, and that is your retinal detachment. If you want to compare something happening here in retinal cases, you will imagine this entire retina, this entire neurosensory retina, has to detach itself away from uh, the RPE, and that will be your retinal detachment in a retinal cases patient. So going at retinal cases cross-section one more time. So this is a patient with a retinal cases cross-section. And the images in the periphery, peripheral retinal cases always come, are difficult and challenging compared to this is actually macular retinal cases. Just for the sake of example, I had it in there. So now looking at an outer retinal hole. So if this is retina, the outer retinal hole is going to be somewhere here. This area will have an outer retinal hole. And this is an example of that. The reason I will say it's an outer retinal hole is because you can pretty much see the layers of core wire through the hole, and that's your outer retinal hole. So imagine what's going to happen if you develop an outer retinal hole. So imagine this is your retinal case, and you develop an outer hole somewhere here. Will this hole be able to get a vitreous flowing into it? No, because there are other intact layers of retina still in between. So you will not have vitreous coming into it and cause a detachment as is in this patient. So this is retinal cases, these are laser marks, and this is your outer hole, but you do not see any well-defined detachment in this case. Compared to that, now let's talk about the inner holes. This is an inner hole right here, and the reason it is inner hole is first you don't see core wire through it. Um, that means it is involving tissue somewhere around here. So you will see rest of the retina through the hole, skitty, uh, retina with skisis in it, uh, but you will be seeing the retina here. So that's what you have going on right now. So this is your skisis hole, this is your inner hole, you still see some layers of the retina, you do not see choroid like this. And again in this situation, yes, you have exposure to the vitreous, vitreous can come in and maybe cause increased splitting of the retinal layers, but it will not be able to cause a detachment per se because you still have intact retina in the outer layers. Similarly, if you have a hole right here, the outer hole we talked about earlier, yes, fluid can theoretically seep in through the splitting layers, can cause some small uh, detachments because it is feeding in from within species cavity, but we will not have our typical communication from the vitreous coming in and separating neurosensory retina because you have intact retina in the outer hole separating and you do not have access to subretinal space in case you have an inner hole, although you have access to the vitreous fluid in case of an inner hole. So now what happens when you get an inner hole as well as an outer hole? You can have a situation like this. In this case, there is this big hole coming up, and this hole is your uh, inner retinal hole. The reason you will call it inner retinal hole is because you can see deep retinal blood vessels and all those details through it. So it is an inner hole somewhere involving these tissues. If there are blood vessels in there, you'll be able to see them going through, and that's what you're noticing. But unfortunately, in this patient, they also develop outer retinal hole, which looks a lot similar to this one, and there's the communication between inner hole and the outer hole, and as a result, fluid can go through, let's imagine there's the inner hole here, through the inner hole, into the outer hole, and it'll have access to subretinal space, and this patient consequently has developed holeless retinal detachment. So really hope that answers your question. Uh, please again email me, give me a call if it doesn't, and uh, yeah, good luck.